we've definitely had some challenges along the way. We uh, going from our headline tour in North America, where virtually all the venues are the exact same, and then we come over to Europe, where we haven't had to downsize everywhere, but we've had to downsize some places. And you know, we are taking this, continuing this tour around the world. So making the show as impactful as it was originally designed to be, while scaling it to making sure that it can be that impactful has has been a bit of a challenge but i think we've done a really good job and we have a really good team of people to help do that for lighting we're carrying solo tech for video we're carrying screenworks for audio we're carrying claire it's very video heavy the show it is just very visual in general we have some scenic elements we have really really great looking lighting just the show was designed and programmed really really well so there's not like a lot of pop gags that kind of come out or anything like that it's just a very hard-hitting well-designed show to the core which is great program lighting and the content is amazing i think the shape of the design still works it so long as we have our offstage lighting fingers in place it's still the same design that you get to look at, it still holds true to the original. I think the lighting is the most important to the skeleton of how the design looks and impacts. We jump in and out of code a lot during the set, so a lot of it is coded. A lot of it, you know, there's thousands of lighting cues that are being triggered, but then sometimes things have to change and we have to jump into a, an element of the show uh, that's more like, I don't know, free-spirited. Um, where he will go off and do a cappella or like a stripped down version of a song and we won't be running the code, it'll be all, all manual triggers. The rig is five, basically five fingers on each side of a video box. And those have BMFLs, Magic Blades, and Solaris flares. We have some X4, Impression X4s on the video wall just to light the band and do some key stuff do some backlight for Khalid. And then we have some X4 bar 20s and 10s on the ground. Just has some like band light, so, and some eye candy stuff. So yeah, it's pretty much like five fixture types for this entire rig. Those are basically the workhorses, the BMFL wash beams um, for the show. But the Magic Blades also are super eye candy, super awesome lights to look at. Super creative focuses and stuff like that. They look really good and the flares, so. With the fixtures that, that Silent House has chosen, like they have done very well. My impression of those fixtures is that they are extremely robust fixtures and they're super reliable. Like we use them every day, all day. Like they've been running all morning, all afternoon, and they're gonna run all night. And they've been doing that for months. We haven't had any issues, really any of the lights. Like normal wear and tear stuff happens, like, you know, just from traveling, but like everything has held up really well. I haven't had like a large number of lights going out. The Granite is what I would prefer. I feel like it's the most intuitive desk and can do the most. Uh, in terms of like video and lighting and automation, um, I feel like it's very capable. That's the desk that I would prefer. It's the desk I started with. The reason I use the monitors is because I'm moving between screens constantly during the show. So it helps to have like time code windows open and like performance windows open in case anything were to happen uh, during the show like it's good to have other monitors that are open so you can freely move between what you normally do. Lighting desk is triggering the video content. Um, it's all been pre-programmed so the only thing that I can really take over is I can black out the video wall or I can uh, throw up live iMag onto the center screens and the outside screens with notch effects or just by itself but um, yeah I don't really touch the video side of it. It's pretty, it's pretty much dialed in at this point. It's an amazing camp to work with. These are all like some of my closest friends. Um, I started with them when we were doing clubs. So we've just kind of like grown and kept growing. And it's a positive movement. I feel like there's a lot of negativity out there in the world. And I feel like Khalid really, in his music, brings out like a positive vibe. We've got about 60 channels that we look after. And I think the biggest challenge is Khalid is a very dynamic singer and he can, he can be singing very soft, almost whispering to like, you know, shouting basically. So I think making sure that all those bits are heard is, is a challenge, especially from room to room. But obviously that's the most important channel up there. So that's what you have to make sure happens. For Khalid's vocal, I mean, I definitely EQ to the room almost daily, at least moving two of the high bands around, just depending what, what kind of excites the room a little too much. Really it's just EQ, 
a simple multiband compressor plug-in and that goes into the Neve 5045 and the Empirical Labs Distressor. Usually, I mean, I'm not afraid to shave off 8 to 10 dB if I have to when he's at his loudest point. You know, he can sing very, very quiet. So just what it does to his voice is super helpful within like a really dense mix against a bunch of tracks and electronics and all that. We use the DPA De Facto and Sure Axiant Digital for uh, Khalid's vocal. That's been one of the best sounding capsules that we've been able to use for him. It has great rejection. It just takes his voice really well. Almost everybody on stage uses 1964 in-ear monitors from the Shure PSM 1000s. And yeah, we get, you know, been lucky enough to be able to get that worldwide and tons of support from 1964. So they've been really great to us. This is my first year carrying the Avid SXL. I got thrown on one for a festival last year and just was amazed by the way that it sounded, just, just turning up the preamp. And I was like, this thing sounds that good out of the gate. I've been EQing a lot less. It's been a good move. I think it certainly has more character than some of the other digital desks out there. I think it is clean and transparent, but I think it just has a lot more usable mid-range than some other preamps. I think it's a great sounding desk, and that's reason number one why I started bringing it out. Being on tour with Khalid is really cool because his fans are so into it. So it's, it's really just exciting just to be surrounded by his crazy fans every night. And uh, it makes the show a lot of fun. And I know it feeds him energy and keeps it very fun for him as well.